Hello everyone and welcome back to another Far Cry 5 Map Editor Showcase. The series where I show off any new major content added to the Far Cry 5 Arcade Editor and just give you my thoughts on them as a map builder myself. So today we are looking at the brand new Blood Dragon assets and tons of other things they have added such as the new zombie and alien AIs. Now I must admit, I am a little late to the party on this video. I was in America when it was released, but you guys do seem to enjoy this series so I thought I would post it regardless of being a few days late. If you are new around here, this channel is dedicated to the Far Cry 5 map editor and I post entire speed builds with my commentary of the whole process. So if you do want to see that, be sure to check out the other videos and subscribe. Finally, before I start showing off the new assets and talking about them, I did have some major delays getting back home to Australia from America. So at the end of this video, I do have a really quick update on when you guys can expect more content on the channel. And if you do play with us every Sunday night, I can tell you when those sessions will resume. So with all that said and done guys, let's check out the new things. This video will be structured in its usual showcase style. I'll begin by looking at the brand new structures that came with the Blood Dragon assets. The second part will look at the new objects. The third part will be dedicated to looking at all the new AIs. And the fourth part will look at any other new features or objects they have added to the editor. Now, it is very easy to miss some of the new features, so if there is anything I do miss, please bring it to my attention, especially if it's something major, but I shall endeavor to show off all the major new stuff and not miss anything too important. Okay, so let's start off with the brand new structures that came with this asset drop. So the first major category is bunkers, and we start off with some hallways and corridors. A lot of these are actually transparent on the inside, and you guys know how much I hate that little feature of some of these assets. But that is because these are for exterior set dressing only by the looks of things. So from the outside, they look solid. From the inside, they look transparent. Normally that would annoy me, but fortunately we have some solid versions of those same assets further down in this category. The first thing that really got my attention was this little bunker structure here. I really like the look of this thing. I'll jump into the editor in explore mode in a moment, give you a sense of scale. And then we've got this massive corridor and it gives me huge, huge halo vibes. Again, I'll jump in shortly and talk about that. We've got some proper corridors here now which don't have the transparent inside walls. And I just really like a lot of the things that they have added with these assets. I couldn't work it out at the time, but I wasn't a massive fan of the Mars assets and I really couldn't put my finger on why. I, I try and build realistic maps, so immediately that was, you know, a factor in probably leading me not to like those assets so much. But after seeing these, I think I've realized why I prefer these so much, despite my preference for realistic maps. And I think it's just because the Mars assets simply look too clean. These ones look a bit weathered, they look a bit earthed, you know, they just, they're futuristic, but they're not out of this world necessarily. And don't get me wrong, I know the Mars expansion was meant to be a bit wacky and a bit crazy, but just my personal preference definitely makes me lean towards these sort of semi-realistic structures that we have with this lot of assets. So I'm just gonna fly through some of this stuff here. I'm not gonna place everything because these videos already are pretty long as they are, but you guys can just get a rough sense of some of the new stuff we've got in this expansion. I say expansion, it's a free content drop, so please don't let that confuse you. If you own Far Cry 5, you can access all the new assets regardless of whether you have a season pass or not. So I'm just going to get most of these on the ground, guys. We've got some walkways. We've got a base room. What else do we have? We have a large base modular part upper. That is a mouthful. A lot of these things do go together a bit like Lego. So I won't try and do that right now, again, just for time purposes. But I know you guys will be able to sort of work that out for yourself once you jump in. So let's have a look here, nothing too major. These are placed down, give you a sense of scale. And then finally, we've got a OCTO lab interior, which I imagine is purely for the purposes of going inside based on how transparent it is. So let's jump into the explore mode, guys. I'll just give you a sense of scale once again. I mean, 
look at this. They look small in the editor view, but the second you jump in, everything is just so much bigger. This is the hallway that really gives me Halo vibes. I think it's the doorways that really do that for me. Here we've got our lab interior. The second you go inside, things look a bit more, a bit more normal. The walls are solid. We've got our normal corridors that I showed off earlier. Next, we've got this little outpost, and this is probably my favorite structure within this category. It's just got so many cool little details built in, like these, uh, these screens, and I just love how it's a bit of a 360 view as opposed to just straight on. I cannot wait to build some maps using these assets. So let's jump back in, look at the next category under structures. Where are we? There we go, Blood Dragon structures doors and windows. I'll probably fly through this category a bit quicker because a lot of these are, you know, just major sort of uh, structural pieces as opposed to entire buildings themselves. But you can see we've got a nice mixture of things with glass doors, solid doors, ones with frames, ones without frames, just loads of little pieces to, uh, to really make the map your own. And uh, I'll just continue flying through here. We've got some larger sort of garage entrances there some really solid doors with some lights built in that look pretty cool. I don't actually know if these are meant to fit in there. I'm not gonna put too much effort in at this point. <laughs> but yeah, you can just see some of the really awesome stuff we have in this category. I love the detail in this. I mean, it's got loads of you know flashy lights and stuff attached, but again, it just doesn't look too out of this world. It looks somewhat understandable and somewhat realistic. And I just like that in terms of my personal preference. Next, we have extensions. These are normal, normally just little things you add to the existing buildings to make them feel a bit more unique. Base jump, jump pad shaft. I have no idea what this is, but I just noticed it for the first time. It looks like a massive elevator shaft. Maybe you can play with gravity or something to make those function. Next, we've got a lab transport tube. That is a interesting structure. As I go through this category, it's probably a good time to throw the disclaimer in that despite the popularity of the Blood Dragon expansion in Far Cry 3, I have actually not played it myself. So if any of this stuff I misinterpret as something else or just don't fully explain it as it is accurately, that wasn't very good English. If I don't explain it accurately, please just gloss over it, guys. I am actually not really familiar with the Blood Dragon game itself. So forgive me for that one. Just loads of columns here. We've got some interesting stuff towards the bottom of this category. This ramp cover here. I don't know what that's actually meant to be, but for me, it actually strikes me as, an, and I know it's not this, it reminds me of the blocks they use on aircraft carriers and airports to stop the jet streams absolutely blasting everything behind. I know that's not its purpose, but if I ever make a runway or an airport map, I think I might be using them for that purpose. Under hangers, we've got some really awesome stuff over here as well. We've got plenty of very large structures. We've got the interiors of some hangers. I mean, look how that just slots together. Isn't that satisfying? And we've just got loads of really big things in this category. Some smaller stuff here, a, bank, a base hanger extension. Again, get a lot of Halo vibes from some of this stuff. And you can also see where they really got their inspiration for some of the Mars assets as well, I think. I think a lot of the, the Mars assets were based on a lot of the things from the Blood Dragon expansion in the original Far Cry 3 game. Of course, that's just wild speculation, but you can definitely see a lot of design cues that just flow across both types of categories in terms of the Mars and the Blood Dragon assets. I am just flying through here. That is all the hangar stuff. I think I'll pop down a few more buildings before I jump into the editor and again, give you a sense of scale. We've got a laboratory facility. They've got all the computers and stuff built in already. And then we have this insane looking structure and basically a hollow version of the same building, which I won't place that one down. Under platforms, we've got some awesome stuff in here too. We've got a nice little glass bridge there. I don't think the glass shatters on that one, unfortunately, but still, it's a very cool little structure. We've got loads of pathways here, platforms. This stuff's pretty repetitive, but there are some really cool things in here as well. We've got some elevated walkways with lights built in. And yeah, I can really see some sci-fi maps really growing in popularity. 
after this stuff has been released. It just looks so cool. And I just feel like a lot of this looks a bit easier to work with than the Mars assets. The Mars assets were a bit of a handful. So many of them were transparent. They had harsh draw distances. It was just a bit of an annoying set of things to work with. Just going through the final few things here now, we've got staircases, platforms, more ramps, stairs. I'm just gonna fly through the rest of this, I think, unless something really grabs my attention. We've got some really big stairs there. They're, they almost look a bit out of style. I'm sure you guys will know the context if you played the original Blood Dragon expansion. But yeah, the color scheme of that just looks very different to everything else. And yeah, just more walkways. Let's go down to satellites. This is the very last thing I'll show off before I jump into the explore mode and give you a sense of scale. This stuff, like the Mars assets, is huge, especially these antennas. They are just ginormous. And that does wrap up structures. So before I move on to objects, let's jump in and just have a real quick look at just how big some of these things are. Also, I'll also show you any sort of details I noticed because I know a lot of you guys are interested in all the useful things that add to these structures so we don't have to detail them ourselves half the time. So here you can see one of the hangars. You can see I added that walkway in there. You, you know, I put very little effort into actually matching these up but you can see how well they fit together. We've got a nice little watchtower here. I imagine that ladder must be added there to climb up but again, very cool structure. We've got a, I assume that's some sort of like airport traffic control tower there perhaps. That's also very cool looking. And if I run over here, you can just see the stairs, the walkways, and yeah, some of the larger structures over here as well. We've got the bunker, we've got the little, uh, I don't even know what this is called. This little outpost there is a very cool little structure. You can see just how tall some of these antennas are, and I hope that I can actually climb up into this. Yes, I can. And again, look at the detail and size of this stuff. This is really cool. This in itself could pretty much be a map if you do it on the deathmatch mode. It is just really cool. I'm so happy with the structures that they have added in this little asset drop. So now that I've showed that off guys, let's look at the objects. Okay, so under the brand new objects from this Blood Dragon asset drop, we have the normal categories, but some very interesting things within them. Not so interesting is the usual assortment of corpses and things like that, which I won't focus on too long because I do like keeping my videos monetized. Under electronics, we've got some also really cool stuff. A lot of this normally would actually attach to buildings, but again, just for the purposes of efficiency, I'll just sort of fly through this stuff. I don't know if these control pads are actually functional, if you can script them in any way. I know scripting may be actually on the way to the editor. Whether that is true or not, I cannot confirm. And some elements of scripting may already be in the editor already. I've sort of had a little poke around since I got back from America, and there's some interesting things starting to show up feature-wise. We've got some capsules here. That purple color on this one gives me the impression that it has some sort of physics attached to it. I hope that purple color certainly won't intrude in the final map design itself. I hope you can get rid of it and that it won't show up if you destroy the structure or anything like that because that is an issue some of the physics items in the editor have. We've got loads of cool stuff, little computers, and I just love this stuff. When they announced the Mars expansion for the Far Cry 5 game, this is sort of what I expected. I didn't really expect the assets to be clean, as clean as they were, as I said. I keep using the word clean. I guess plasticky and fake is what the Mars assets sort of, the vibe they give off to me. These ones just look a bit earthier, a bit more human, and a bit more realistic. Again, I know that's just down to personal preference, but I keep going on about it because I just do love some of these brand new objects. These cover items here are really cool. The barrier covers, I love the lights on the side and they've got really cool shapes and patterns to them. I just really do like the look of this stuff. We've got cages, which is a bit creepy. Some of this stuff looks pretty daunting. We've got communication units. We've got more cover there. That's an actual roadblock, that one. 
got chairs. There'll be lots of stuff in this category that I really will just have to fly through for the purposes of time. We've got some benches, desks. And what really strikes me about these assets is just how detailed everything is already without you having to go through and place individual things yourself. So now we go down to lighting. We've got the Danko lamppost. I probably butchered the pronunciation of that, but that is a really cool looking asset. Then we've got a, a large light post as well. That looks really cool. I sort of I get the feeling that could be used in almost like a futuristic stadium. That looks really, really awesome. We've got a light ceiling, just loads of smaller lights now, and a shield generator. I imagine that is to give the impression that a force shield could go across a doorway or something like that. And then we've got a garrison beam lights, which is uh, very bold as well. Under mechanical, we've got some pipes and things like that. These are semi-submerged into the ground, but I will just fly through them. We've got this one here, which is really cool. I will actually raise this one up because it's got that really awesome texture flowing through it, and that looks really, really cool as well. Back to mechanical now, we've got our laboratory prototype machine. We've got robot arms, just loads of really cool things. Again, very highly detailed as well benches, trims, just all the detail you could possibly want in this category. Finally, under storage, we've got some large equipment containers, sort of futuristic shipping containers is what I see those as. We've got a gun rack, which is very cool looking, a floating gun rack is what I'm gonna call it at least. <laughs> and then we've got loads of just, yeah, interesting little variations of the same objects, big, small, floating, not floating, everything in between. Got barrels, which look very awesome as well, a larger version. Then we've got a storage locker, more lockers, containers. Yeah, just loads of cool things. A lot of these objects aren't necessarily new. You know, we have barrels, lockers, all that stuff already in the editor. It's just the way they are styled is so different from what we already have. So they really do feel like unique and useful additions. And I believe that really does finish up all the objects under Blood Dragon. So if I just quickly jump into the explore mode, I'll show you just how detailed they are. Again, give you a sense of scale. And yeah, these just look really, really cool. I kind of wish we had another larger version of this big lamppost here and one twice as tall and big would also be quite cool. But yeah, you can just see the detail on some of these assets. It is so, so cool. I really do like all the things they've added with this little expansion. So with all that out of the way, now let's move into some of the stuff that isn't necessarily tied to Blood Dragon, but is still very exciting indeed. Now we can take a look at something which I'm sure a lot of you are going to be really excited about. And that is, of course, the brand new AIs. This is something loads of you have been frustrated that they haven't been added in sync with the assets, especially the aliens and the zombies expansion. So let's take a look at them because they are finally in the editor. So of course, these zombies do sort of reflect the ones you see in the campaign expansion. We've just got loads of little variations. I personally have not played the campaign expansion myself yet, of course, being away and all that. So a lot of this stuff is really new to me. And once again, you guys will probably have a lot more context on how these guys behave than I do. We've got the enemies DLZ NPCs. I imagine these are just human, yeah, sort of survivors, military personnel. I know there's a few different factions in that campaign expansion. So I imagine these represent some of those. Oh, I've hit my AI limit for that square. Let's jump over here instead then. Loads of really cool looking stuff here. These guys look really, really crazy. Some of their texture work is pretty nuts. I think a lot of this is just the same AI with that sort of different class variants from what I can see. That is how they are, yeah. So these are just some of the new AIs that you can get. I think that is it for the zombies and stuff like that. Let me just double check. We've got our spawning references over here. These are zombie related as well. It looks like these are... Yeah, these spawn zombies, that's how I understand these work. And you can actually go inside and customize their properties. So you can make them spawn, 
You can choose how many enemies they spawn, the range, all that sort of stuff, the triggers. So yeah, loads of really cool customization options with those have been added. Now let's look at some of the aliens. And at first I thought, where are they? And they are under animals, which I suppose technically makes sense. I mean, you could even put these guys under animals, I guess. But yeah, it was something that did confuse me briefly when I first realized they were in here. So if we go down, you can see we've got some pretty scary versions of the zombie creatures as well. So bears, all that sort of stuff. And now, Look at this, they've even got Blood Dragons. Now I have not played the Blood Dragon expansion as I have already said, but even I am excited for how cool and scary those things look. I thought Yetis were awesome and terrifying and those things just took it to a whole new level. So continuing down now, you can see we've got our aliens down here. These things look very creepy. Let me just scroll through, place them all down for you. We've got a moose zombie, which again looks pretty creepy. Just scrolling through, here we go. Now we've got some of the larger aliens in here. I know they're not actually called aliens. Not, that's not how they really refer to them in the game itself. I know they've got their own unique name, but that's just making it easier for me. So that's what I'll call them. Going down further, I'll just place a few more of these guys. They are absolutely terrifying. They've got so much detail and so much aggression to their design. It's, uh, it's really, really intimidating. We've got a wolf zombie, which will also be terrifying. We've got some workers. These guys have lights all over them. And then we have a zombie yeti as well. Now, I'm going to jump in. And attend. Actually, no, I'm not going to jump in because things will go crazy. Let's just take a look at these a bit closer before I do jump into explore mode. And I will try and give you a sense of scale for all this without being absolutely slaughtered. Actually, I won't be slaughtered because I will be invisible in explore mode, but it does give you a sense. Ah, got object area not clipping. Let me sort that out and then I'll uh, jump into the editor and show you. Okay, so I have sorted the clipping issue, guys. I thought I'd actually share with you what the problem was because clipping issues are a bit of a problem in the editor. It was these smaller little alien AIs here. They were sunk into the ground ever so slightly. That is a bit of a recurring problem. If you do have sort of clipping objects and they are AI related, it's normally the smaller creatures because their sort of hitboxes are so close to the ground. So now that that is sorted, let's jump into the editor and let things go a bit crazy. Okay, so you can see how aggressive all these animals are. The blood dragons are just nuts. I mean, they're probably going to win this little standoff, I would fully expect, but everything is nuts and my controller is going crazy right now with the sort of vibration and everything that comes with this level of chaos. But I just love this stuff. I cannot believe the playground that Ubisoft has given us with all these AIs. I've never really been a big fan of their shift towards single player missions and all that stuff. I was really annoyed that they took the multiplayer aspect out of the editor in previous iterations of Far Cry, but I'm so glad that they still have retained these missions now and also given us the ability to make multiplayer maps. It's just the perfect combination. So they are all the a uh, all the new AIs, I believe, and I am yeah really pleased with those. They're all very different. Of course, most of these would not actually feature in the same map if you're making it a uh, not a realistic but a uh, a more harmonious experience. Zombies and the aliens would be an interesting combo, nevertheless. So the final part of this video will look at any other new items they have added. So I'll be back in a moment with those. All right, let's finish up the video by looking at all the uh, little new things I've added right throughout the editor that might be quite interesting to some of you. And boy, are there some interesting stuff here. We have got now destructible generic shapes, meaning that all this stuff actually breaks. It's not solid anymore. We've of course got the, the solid versions that won't go anywhere during gameplay, but all this stuff has a destructive capability to it that will just make the maps feel a whole lot more dynamic. So these ones here, they've got no physics attached. That means that they will not sort of 
respond to gravity necessarily. You can make them float, but they will still destroy themselves. The ones with physics, I understand, do respond to gravity. So let's, uh, let's just look at a generic shape that might demonstrate that for us. If I place that down, I'm hoping if it does have that physics attached, this stuff will fall down. So I'll have a look at that in a moment for you. And of course, Invisible is something they added in the last update, so be sure to check out that editor showcase if you want to hear more about those invisible walls that you could just see there. So let's have a look here. If I were to bump into this stuff, there you go. It may be light, but it certainly has physics attached to it. So yeah, you can see how that works. And the fact it is destructible. There we go. Okay, that was a nicely timed little charge at me there. So now you can see these larger object, objects, they will also completely destroy themselves. Hopefully, okay. It turns out pyramids are a good launch pad for grenades. That is funny. Okay, but yeah, you can see these things will also destroy themselves as well. And hopefully when they do get destroyed, they sort of show the texture that you apply to them as well. And you can see just how detailed some of the destruction is there. That only blew off the corner instead of blowing up the entire thing. I'm really impressed with just how far Ubisoft have gone with some of these generic shapes. Now let's look at audio and visuals. There's some really cool things under here. So now we've got sound points. I believe these are also new. These basically localize sound effects. So if you've got an air conditioning unit, you can stick this on it and it will make the correct noise. I believe this stuff is new. Please forgive me if I'm incorrect, but I have certainly not spotted it before. And just loads of little sounds in here. We've got door knocking, car alarms, waterfalls, just everything you could ask for. Volumes, these are sort of the same sounds, but on a larger sort of scale and you can customize the shape of this stuff. So, and this will respond to its sort of category. So you can see we've got church there, we've got generic, room large. So I just imagine that affects the echo of the sounds you eventually apply. Visuals, I don't believe there's anything too major new under here, apart from some lighting management options. Next we have, let's go to gameplay. I think that's where the next new lot of things will be found. Weapons and ammo, there might be some new weapons in there. I actually won't showcase them here because of the time of the video. I don't think there's any major new vehicles under here. One that did catch my attention was this one, which I think is new, I could be wrong. But what is definitely new is this little cubic thing going on here. And they've also got a cubic helicopter and a cubic jet ski. I don't know where they come from. I imagine that might be a blood dragon thing. If it's not, I have no idea where or why the inspiration for those actually happened. But now you can see we've got under this one over here, we've got an AI. This one's called a Navlink Character 4. I actually don't know what that does, guys. You know, I haven't played with the AIs that much myself. I mainly build multiplayer maps. So if you know what that is, do let me know. Finally, we've got some new explosives. We've got some uh, Blood Dragon stuff down here. We've got some explosives there. We've got a larger explosive tank. We've got a larger fuel one there. And then of course, just one over here too. So nothing too special under that category, but it's good to see we've got the explosives from Blood Dragon as well. And then finally, we have scripting. I'll be honest, I've got no clue how this stuff actually works, but I'm gonna show you that it's in the editor regardless. So I alluded it to it earlier. It turns out it is in the game already. You've got trigger events, trigger look at, and then trigger volume. Similar with the sound, I imagine these are just sort of very specific trigger points. This can be applied to a larger space. And of course you can customize the size of that object. So, I believe guys, that is all the new stuff added with the game. So I'll just quickly wrap up that channel news as I suggested earlier. In terms of the channel updates, I actually posted a dedicated video talking about everything on the channel, including some exciting developments coming very, very soon. Be sure to check that out. This is just a quick amendment to some of the stuff that I said in that video now that I've got back to Australia much later than I first anticipated. The first thing is that many of you know we have the Sam Place Test Team Xbox Club, where we test all the maps I build on this channel and actually just have a bit of fun in the game itself. We play every Sunday, 11 p.m. West Australian time, but it's been a bit rough this past month because I incurred some storm damage to my studio. 
then I missed two Sundays because I was actually in America. And while we were meant to resume this week, I got back so late that I simply didn't have the energy to stay up to midnight Australian time, along with work and all the other things I now have to catch up on because of the late arrival back home. But I am here to confirm that we will resume from this Sunday, the 9th of September 2018. So please join me again, guys. I know it's been a while. I can only thank you for your patience. In terms of content for the channel, I am a little behind schedule as well. I try and smash out a video every Friday of the week. This one will be a bit different because it's a showcase, not a speed build. But the next build is coming very soon. It is a journey map. Probably not what you expect, but certainly a fun build that I'm enjoying. And I will try and get back to my weekly uploads from there, guys. So all I can say is thank you again for your patience with the content. Please understand the uh, very frustrating circumstances that have delayed progress in terms of our play sessions and the content on the channel. Again, more details on where we have been, where we are, and where we are going with this channel are available in that channel update video I did. But that's just some quick information for you guys. This has been the showcase of the new assets in the Far Cry 5 Arcade Editor. If you did enjoy, be sure to drop a like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to check out all the speed builds I do, which really are the heart of this channel. I cannot wait to actually build a map with these new items. I'm far more excited about these than I am the Mars assets that recently came out. And I cannot wait to get round to that. Despite a few maps already lined up, I will eventually get to using these. So thank you for your support, guys, and I will see you in another video very, very soon. Goodbye.